back to the channel everybody, it's Mark from Cricket Bat Info and today we're going to be having a look at an absolute classic GN Scoop Greg Chapel Master, made in Australia. So firstly thank you very much to Pedro from the Discord server, also a close mate of mine and he's actually picked this one up on Gumtree and I think he said the story was that the guy who owned it uh, was playing cricket, uh, purchased the bat, hardly used it and did his knee and just recently was cleaning out his cupboards found the back in the back of his cupboards and it's in immaculate condition maybe a little bit of a line here but you can see that it's hardly been used and uh, it's a really good example of a classic uh, international bat and I've obviously in the past uh, reviewed the modern scoop GN100. But this is as much, I guess, a bit of a homage to the history of the bat. Um, I'll put an article, it was it put in the Guardian when the, um, the GN scoop turned 40. And Swan Richards, who was the managing director and head bat maker of GN Australia originally, um, <clears throat> he posted it, I follow him on Facebook, and he had the original drawings that um, Len Newbury he was the head bat maker at Roberts Bridge um, GN headquarters in the UK. And he designed uh, all the tooling to make the scoop long before it was available. And you can see these, these uh, pages that um, Swan refers to as having um, Len's original handwriting on them. Um, so Swan has got those and he lives in Melbourne. And um, you can have a look at him on uh, Crusader Cricket Australia. Uh, but basically in the article he says that he did a 18 month crash course under Len and uh, John Newbury actually crafted the first GN100 and obviously it all took off from there. So the GN100, the scoop, was a very, very popular bat used by probably 50% you know, of the international players. Uh, and it was at that time where World Series cricket was coming in and you were starting to see these players on TV so, you know, the bat got a hell of a lot of coverage and everybody wanted one. So they, this is probably the most popular bat in history, um, bar none, really. I, I mean, I can't think of a modern day equivalent of what this thing did for cricket. Everybody wanted to own one. And I think uh, I saw the retail prices, I think the top one was $75 or something. And, you know, like how much have prices shot up from there? So I don't really know a huge amount about the Master. I'm assuming it's probably the top of the range. In those days, you know, when, even when I got my um, GN1000 Ultimate in the 90s, um, this is the sort of grains that you would be seeing. You know, they wouldn't be even, they wouldn't, uh, they'd be pretty straight, obviously. Um, but there was not sort of this whole thing about having perfectly straight grains and all that sort of things. People didn't think about bats that way. They were a tool for making runs. So it was more about how the bat picked up and how it was going to feel in your hands. And that was the thing about um, the scoop. And it's obviously just the amount of wood that is carved out of that bat. They bought the rights um, to market the bat with that perimeter weighting system, which was basically moving the weight to the outside of the bat by scooping it out of the center. It would apparently make the bat far more forgiving for off-center shots uh, and provide a slightly bigger middle, which I personally think um, the size of the middle was to do with the willow and pressing. Uh, but it was not gonna favor any particular point on the bat because you know it's just one long straight edge and um, the whole guts of it taken out. It's really weird when you look at, especially for you young fellas, like looking at bats like this and thinking, you know, what the hell's going on? You know, where's my, where's my bat gone? So Swan actually uh, bought the idea for this back to Australia and they started manufacturing them here. Uh, originally, Ian Chappell started using the scoop and then his brother cottoned onto it, Greg Chappell, um, who arguably is, is, you know, from that era. Uh, one of the most popular cricketers in the world. Um, measure the edges for you. And you know, with that huge convex face on it, you've got an 11 millimeter edge there, and a 14 millimeter edge there, 
and in the centre here, which is probably in about a mid to mid low position, uh, we're looking at 20, 20 millimetres. Um, this is 107.1. There was a bit of sanding uh, done on it, but I think that's just straight out of the factory. Let's just appear at the shoulders. Uh, what sort of dimensions are we looking at? 37, a lot more wood up here at the shoulders uh, leading into the handle. Let's just have a look at what the gauge sort of looks like on a bat like this. And you can see that traditional eight millimeter camber, if not more, probably nine, I'd say it's about eight. Uh, a hell of a lot of wood uh, rounded out towards those edges. And that's why bats like this, you know, didn't really have as many problems with broken toes because there's just got this round toe with this round face. So the ball's more likely to deflect off of there rather than hit it and cause a massive amount of trauma on the bat and vibration that comes all the way down through to the handle, breaks shoulders, breaks toes. These bats were far more durable in that respect. The other thing, obviously, they didn't do a lot of uh, drying on the bats. When we put this on the back, I mean, just have a look at that gap there. Let's see if I can uh, measure it. So that bat is sacrificing at the centre there, 31 uh, millimetres from the top of the gauge to the midpoint on that scoop. 67 minus 31 gives you, um, you know, roughly 36 millimetres right at that point at the middle. So that was roughly what I said, wasn't it? Yeah, but this this means nothing really. These these bats are all legal. You can still use them now. Um, one big long edge, one big long piece of meat means that there's they're not favouring really. Uh, low, mid or high, but um, in that article it does mention that uh, Stuart Kranzbuehler was asked his thoughts on the bat and he said that they, they sort of lost a lot of power up in this region here. Now the other thing about that is, you know, taking all that weight out of that area there means the centre of gravity moves, shifts towards the hands. So we should see a nice balance on this bat. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much perfect right in that point there. So it's gonna, it's a really lovely balanced bat. Um, yeah. I don't know what you would call that in that grade now. They'd probably classify that as grade three. Um, maybe grade two somebody would try, but I would say it's, they'd call that a grade three. Just gonna zero this. And Firstly, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to tell you what I think it feels like. So that the pickup on this is absolutely incredible. It feels like I'm holding, oh God, like a 2.6. Feels like a 2.6 in my hands, maybe a little bit heavier. Um, and the actual weight is 27.3. So it's picking up a little bit better than its weight. And obviously when you add things like a scuff sheet uh, toe guard and things like that, then that weight uh, jumps up. Um, now the owners only changed the grip to a modern uh, zone grip. Obviously the original one was actually stuck to the handle. Um, let's have a look at that handle. So the handle is slightly semi-oval, almost square at the bottom, round at the top, thick. Uh, and under here, you can see much, much different um, inserts to what we've got these days. You've got a big S stamped in there and they look like it's some sort of rubber that's been used. Uh, it's actually got the little uh, threaded threads through it like, uh, like tire rubber. Um, very thin binding. Uh, no stampings, nothing unusual there other than the S at the top. Uh, it says here, this is a quality article. I'd say that says English Willow under there. Um, um, yeah, they told you how to use the look after the bat on the sticker. And up until, you know, the early 70s, Grey Nichols, you know, was the first to pioneer that big red sticker up until then, you know, Bats just basically came out with 
Um, yeah, let's tap it up. So we'll move this to the side. Remembering this is 30 to 40 year old Willow. Make sure that's in camera and we will start at the toe. So it's not really going there. Off centre. It's definitely on the firmer side. I think it's been used, but not much. It still feels like it's playing in. Uh, it's definitely had a few out of the middle there. And it's got a really nice action there. But going much better in that lower position. So that pretty much follows, you know, extending that edge all the way down. It gives you a much longer playing area. That's impressive, I like that. And um, thank you very much to Pedro. That is the GN Greg Chapel Master, a fantastic uh, find. And thank you very much for bringing that to the channel. And uh, once again, if you like what I do on the channel, then please subscribe to see the next video, otherwise you're gonna miss it. Gotta hit that bell icon. Comment below if you've got any stories about the uh, Master. Uh, you wanna tell me uh, whether you had one or what you think it's worth. Thank you very much. GN Scoop.